My name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 244 and today is our lesson number 142 please turn to page 244 problem number 6f problem number 6f x squared minus x minus 1, we are told equals 0. Let's do it through, factor, for, through a method called factorization. And if you've if you been watching this video on a regular basis, you know that we have done this before many times. We, did, we covered this topic of factorization on day 99 through 103. I did it again one more problem on day 124 and then another one on day 129. The method is called factorization and this is how it goes. We are looking for we are looking for two integers such that when we multiply them we get a product of product of the coefficient of the x squared here the coefficient of x squared is positive 1 coefficient of x squared and this guy the constant so we get a product of positive 1 times a negative 1 or simply negative 1 and the sum of this guy middle guy which is a negative 1 sum of negative 1. Those are the two conditions that we have to fulfill. Can you think of any two numbers like that? Well, since, since, the product, since the product has to be negative 1 and since they have to be integers, they have to be whole number with the product of negative 1, that does actually does not leave us much choice. There is only one choice, that's it, which is this right here. It has to be either positive 1, positive 1, and negative 1 or negative 1 and positive 1 which is the same thing positive 1 times the negative 1 gives us the product of product of negative 1 so the first condition is of course very easy to fulfill this right here what you're looking at but their sum is what the sum but the sum but the sum of positive 1 and a negative 1 does not equal what we need. We need negative 1. They equal, when you add them up, they equal to 0. Their sum does not equal to negative 1. Which tells us, which tells us that no such two integers exist. No such two integers exist. Alas. We have no choice we have no choice but to, but to employ what is known as quadratic formula which I hate using it because you have to memorize it you have to know this for the exam because there are some problems on the exam that are going to crop up which will require you to use quadratic formula because you can't use any other method factorization does not work here the only way to figure out what values of x will satisfy this equation is to use the quadratic formula so let's do that so no such no such two integers exist. There are no two integers. There are no two integers which will give us a, which will give us a product of negative one and a sum of negative one also. Product of negative one and a sum of negative one. It, it's not possible because if the product is negative one, the integers must be positive one and negative one, and their sum is going to be zero. It's not going to be negative one. So that's it. We have. We have no choice 
but to employ what is known as quadratic formula. Now, quadratic formula goes something like this. Quadratic formula goes something like this. X equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's talk about what this a, b and c are. Let's talk about that, what a, b and c are. A in this formula, A in this formula is the coefficient of x squared. In this case, A is positive 1. B in this formula is the coefficient of the middle guy, the x, which in this case is negative 1. And C is the constant, which in this case is also negative 1. We just have to plug in the values of A, B, and C and figure out what, what, what the values of x are. I need the room, so I'm going to do it here. x equals negative b, a negative b means negative negative 1, negative negative 1, negative b, b is negative 1, plus minus b squared, which is negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared, b squared, b squared, minus 4 times a times c, 4 times positive 1 times negative 1, minus 4 times positive 1 times negative 1 over 2 times a, 2 times a which is positive 1. Now we just have to simplify it, that's all. We have to simplify it, that's all. I'm going to bring this x down a little bit before my algebra teacher gets too excited. He was a stigler, he was very strict. So let's do that then. Negative times negative 1 is a positive 1 and when we get in the square root sign in the square root sign, here's what we get. Negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is positive 1. And so negative 1 squared is positive 1. And then negative times negative, negative times negative is positive. So 4 times 1 times 1 is positive 4. Over 2 times 1 is just 2. So we get positive 1, positive or negative, positive 1. plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. That's it. That's your answer. Answer is 1 plus or minus because, because it's a quadratic equation. It has two solutions. 1 plus or minus root 2, root 5 over 2. I'm not done with it yet. We are not done with it actually. As far as the book is concerned, as far as the book is concerned, we are done because that's how, the, that's how they show the problem answers in the book. So if you look in the back of the book where the answers are, that's exactly what you show, what, what they show there. But we can carry on for a while and see if we can learn something out of it. Okay? So let's carry on here. I want to find out what square root of 5 is. How can I figure out, how can we figure out what square root of 5 is? Keep listening, okay? Keep listening and you will learn something out of it. We know, we know that, I, I don't need any of this actually. We are done with all of this thing. We don't need any of this thing. We are done with this part. We're trying to figure out what square root of 5 is without a calculator. We know that uh, we know that 20 times 20 is 400, which of course is true because 2 times 2 is 4 and then a 0 and a 0 will give us 400. We also know that 25 times 25, and if you don't know it, you should know it, you should do it, do it out and figure it out, is 625. That tells us so the square root of 5, that implies that the square root of 5 is somewhere between 2 and 2.5. Why? Because 2 would be the case if it were 4. Square root of 4 equals 2. And we just found out that the square root of 6.25 equals 2.5. Why? Because 25 times 25 is 625. 
which is same as saying, which is same as saying that 2.5 times 2.5 equals 6.25. We just move the decimal places two places. 6.25. So square root of 6.25 is 2.5. The square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 5, which is 5, is between 4 and 6.25. It's got to be somewhere between 2 and 2.5. I want to locate it. I want to find it. I want to locate it. I want to find it. Let's put this somewhere where we can save it because we're going to need this information soon. 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. Let's find out, see what we can do, okay? Keep listening. As I said, you might learn something. So these are the kind of six sometimes you have to think about in the exam. Let's find out what 21 times 21 is. 21 times 21. 21 times 1 is 21. 1 carry 2. Carry 2. 21 times 2. 21 times 2 is 42. Plus 2 is 44. That's too small. That's too small. We need a 500. We need a 500, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, the 500 part, just be patient. Let's multiply 22 times 22. 22 times 2 is 44, 4 carry 4. 22 times 2 is 44, plus 4 is 48. Hmm, 48. I must have made a mistake here. 48 is actually very close to 500. 22 times 2 is 44, 4, carry 4, 44 plus, it is 48, oh by golly we are done, right George we are done, I have a mistake in my notes here, I make a note, I made a put down that it is too small, this is too small, this is this, this is actually, this is actually, very close, 500. This is only 16 away from 500, and if you were to do 23 times 23, if you were to do 23 times 23, which I've already done, so I'm going to put it here, 23 times 3, 23 times 3 is 69, so 9 carry 6, and 23 times 2 is 46, 46 plus 6 is going to give you, 46 plus 6 is going to give you 52. You see, 529. So if you were to go 23 times 23, if you were to go 23 times 23, we will off by two. We will be off by 29. Here we are off by only 16. So what does it tell us? What does it tell us? That tells us. That tells us. I need the room, so I'm going to erase all of this thing here. Now that we know that 22 times 22 is 484. Now that we know that 22 times 22 is 484. That tells us that tells us that 2.2 times 2.2, 2.2 times 2.2 must be 4.84. We just move the decimal place two times. 2.2 times 2.2 is 4.84, which is very close to 5. Therefore, Therefore, now we know that the square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. Square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. We're going to put that back in there. I need the room again, so I'm going to raise all of this thing here. Okay. 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2 equals 1 plus or minus 2.2 over 2, which tells us that x is equal to 1 plus 2.2 over 2, which is same as 3.2 over 2, which is same as 1.6, or x is equal to 1 minus 2.2 over 2, which is same as negative 1.2 over 2, which is same as negative 0.6. That's it. Those are our answers. The answers are, the roots are, the roots in this case are positive 1.6 and negative 0.6. Positive 1.6 and negative 0.6. We are still not done yet. I want to verify that answer. 
in order for us to be able to verify it, we need our original equation back. The original equation was x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Let's start with 1.6. Now these are these are squares that should know that you should know by heart. As I as I have told you many times before, if you have watched my videos in the past, you must know your squares one through twenty, if you want to have a if you want to have any hope of getting a decent score in the GRE. You cannot depend on every little bloody thing on a calculator. If somebody asks you what's the square of sixteen, you should know it like that. You must know it like that. Memorize all the squares from one through twenty. You don't have to know seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. 17, 18, and 19 do not appear very often, but you must know all the others. 16 times 16, again, if you do not know, you can verify it. 16 times 16, if you do it out, you will see that it is 256. 256, which means, which tells us, which tells us that 1.6 times 1.6 is 2.56. See right here? I'm squaring it. I'm squaring 1.6. Why am I squaring 1.6? Because that's what we need here. We need 1.6 squared minus 1.6 minus 1. 1 1.6 squared we just said was 2.56. 2.56 minus 1.6 and a 1.6 which is same as 2.56 minus 2.6. 2.56 is very close to 2.6 therefore this is approximately 0. The reason why it's 2.56 as opposed to 2.6 is because we are approximating in our square root thing. But this is not a precise figure you see square root of 5 is not exactly 2.2, it's 2.2 something goes on forever. So since we are approximating it here, we get an approximate here, and as you can see this is approximately 0. It works. 1.6 works. Now let's verify 0. 0.6. Now let's verify negative 0. 0.6. Let's do it up here. x squared minus x minus 1, we know has to equal 0. Negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.6 squared, and a negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.6 squared. Well, I, we know that 6 squared is 36, therefore 0 0.6 squared, 6 times 6 is 36, therefore, therefore, 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 is going to be, just move two decimal places, it's going to be 0 0.36. 0 0.36. Negative times negative is positive, so it's positive 0 0.6 and a negative 1. What do you find? 0 0.36 plus a 0 0.6 is 0 0.96. 0 0.96 minus a 1, 0 0.96 minus a 1 is indeed approximately equal to 0. So that also works. These two roots are correct. In the book, they left it out. They left it as the the quadratic form. There, they tell you that it, it is equal to one plus or minus root five over two, which to me is a very ugly looking form. I don't like it. I need it something nice, something beautiful, something elegant. And the roots are one point six, positive one point six. The roots of the equations are positive 1.6 and a negative 0.6 and we just verify that both of those rules actually do or do actually satisfy the equation. Do you understand? I will see you tomorrow where we will solve some simultaneous equation that you see in problem number 7. Alright? Bye now.